So, um, I'm Charlotte, um, and I'm based in the Edinburgh Centre. But I really help, um, wanted to ask a question as well, because, you know, there's a, a lot of talk today about education and young people. Um, but teachers themselves don't have the knowledge, they don't have the confidence to have these conversations, they don't have necessarily the time and the curriculum, um, because the, particularly the higher up they go, there's pressures of exams. So I guess my question is, and as Diana said, we've been working in this field for a while. Um, I was working with a, a teacher only this week um, about developing an anti-racist curriculum in her school. This is like the second three-hour training she's given to it, and now she's given other hours across the whole of this year to develop it. And she is kind of saying to me, my teachers do not know how to do this. They just do not know how to do this. And this is one school in Edinburgh that I have given about, I don't know, 12 hours of my time to in terms of training. So, and I'm one person, I can't do that to every school in Edinburgh, let alone for other local authorities we work in. So my question is, if this is going to happen, how and where and who is going to enable teachers to find the time and have the training in order for this to happen? Because it always comes down to, oh, education needs to do it, and teachers can't do everything. And if they are going to do this, how are we going to support and enable them that to happen? Who wants to kick off? Yeah, There's a bit of nodding going on <laughs> the platform, you'll be glad to hear. No, absolutely. I think um, I do agree with you because I, I, I obviously work within race equality and um, I've been within the field for many, many years. So I was a student when I started working on this and I was doing it as a volunteer. And the, a lot of the people I was working with also were taken out of their day jobs. So it also goes down to resourcing. So like my role was created and our institution had to look for resource to get me there so I'm able to do it full time. So it's going down to institutions actually looking for experts or people who are in the way to become experts and looking for that resource to add them there to add on to it. Because me then joining this institution has added that level of you don't have to take five hours more off your day because I can do it because it's my day job and being able to, to give that access. And I do agree that um, it is a lot of a lot to ask of teachers and educators to take off time and learn all these new skills. But it's also understanding the importance of them wanting to and not having to feel like they have to. So it's more we want to change our, our, how we are as a people and how our next generation is taught and how they view themselves as global citizens and being able to use in many ways whatever you're already doing as an educator and maybe tweaking one book in, 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 in your class or one sort of assessment you give. So it's one small, small things like that that could then build up. But again, it all goes down to resourcing and getting people who want to rather than have to do it. Yeah, more nodding. I've got a slightly different, <laughs> I've got a different approach. Um, I said if I was, I, and this has always been my, my, my response, um, if I was given the authority to do this, I would implement this straight away. Someone who works in, as an EYP, I could totally understand your frustration. Because one, the paperwork, you have to write everything. And it's really difficult to talk about something that you have no experience in, no lived experience. So it becomes very, very difficult to make it a possible situation. My solution, and this is a challenge I'll give to our um, politicians who make decisions, we have got uh, refugees, we have got people who have come into this country uh, for whatsoever reason. They cannot access public funds. They're skilled. They have got degrees, masters and PhDs. Um, they're waiting for their immigration issues to be sorted out. Why not use them and their skills in that department? We have teachers. We have lecturers. Why don't you say, actually, you're a teacher, You've got, we can do a PV, PVG for you and make sure that you know you qualify in whatever parts you need to qualify in. And if you give us 10 hours a month to come and teach our young group around race equality or whatever you need to do about history, whatever you need to do, because you have the lived experience, that removes the pressure from that teacher who one has to go and do the research and then has to go and talk about a topic that can be uncomfortable and they don't know what they're talking about and they have to try and deliver it so that anyone who's in that who in, is in that room can relate it's really really difficult if you are a white person trying to 
tell a black person about the slave trade and have that conversation, they're like, what? But it's very, very different if it comes from another black person. And, you know, I hope that makes sense. You know, so it's easy for, these are things that the government can do to utilise the resources, I'm talking about the resources that we have, utilise the resources that we've got, utilise the people that we've got, utilise the skills that we have got on the ground, get them to come and work in schools, get them to come and give talks, let them have workshops, but again, they're using their, their, their land experience and their lived experiences and also the expertise of wherever country they've come from and they can use that to deliver.